This is cinnabar, a reddish mineral which primarily consists of the infamous mercury metal in its salt form mercury sulfide. All those red crystals and patches you see are the mercury sulfide, and in this video we'll be cooking it into mercury metal. Now in the past, this horn was beaten up until it was a powder and was first used by the harmonious artisans of the Emerald Terraces. I promise you that's what they were called. They decided their plates didn't look cool enough so they added a much needed radiance to their receptacles of sustenance, despite the huge toxicity of mercury sulfide, believing it was a symbol of eternity. I guess they were just... <laughs> There are mainly two different ways of refining this molecule. First way is to give the aura toasty Friday night barbecue roast where the bonds between the sulfur and the mercury is broken apart, leaving you with pure mercury. Oh, look at how much fun they're having. Second way is to do a bit of an Uno reverse card with aluminium, where the aluminium still is the sulfur for the mercury, which gets diagnosed with clinical depression and drops out of solution. Let us indulge in a little bit of cooking. Shall we? We start off by weighing 180 grams of sodium hydroxide drain cleaner and add this to 500 milliliters of distilled water. I then add a stir bar and stir everything until the solution becomes crystal clear. I transfer this over to a larger beaker, then proceed to weigh out and add 45 grams of what I like to call banana powder, something the average Joe seems to call sulfur. Tastes great in protein shakes. Essentially, what we are creating is a sodium sulfide solution which will form a soluble complex with the mercury sulfide. This allows it to dissolve into the water, making it vulnerable to the finesse of the aluminium we will add later on. You can monitor the formation of the sodium sulfide as the sulfur disappears and the solution starts to turn a dark red. Generally, sodium sulfide is colorless, however thiosulfate impurities cause the solution to take on a deeper and darker red color. Anyway, now it's time to get ready our victim, the mercury. Here I weigh out 116.3 grams of the mercury sulfide and dump it all into our solution. The moment it's added, the mercury immediately starts to complex with the polysulfides, forming a molecule known as sodium dithiomercuate, which in turn allows it to be soluble in the water. Some of the mercury decided it wanted to disobey me and sat at the bottom. However, by increasing the stirring, we knocked them all back into line. Hello and welcome to Cooking with Oscanium. On today's menu, we have the fabled aluminium rolls. To cook this delicacy, we must first delicately roll our aluminium sheets. Next, we cut the fresh roll into bite-sized pieces with a sharp knife, unlike what I have here. After chopping our roll with absolute surgical precision, we can serve on a plate alongside a pint of methyl mercury, of course. Next. Whoa, what's going on? Now it's time to add our aluminium into the solution. However, my 5000 IQ neuron activation monkey brain decided to do this in an enclosed space where all the evolved hydrogen sulfide gas has nowhere to go but my lungs. Oh, did I mention it's as potent as hydrogen cyanide? Time for more sacrifices!
Can we all just have a moment of silence for all the valiant soldiers that died on this land? What's happening here is that the aluminium is reacting with the dissolved sodium dithiomercurate as well as the sodium hydroxide, forming mercury metal, some more sodium sulfide, sodium aluminate and oxidane. The sodium sulfide proceeds to dissolve more mercury sulfide which repeats the whole cycle over in what's called a displacement reaction. And if you're a normal human being, allow me to give you the MONKEY EXPLANATION! Grey monkey have two banana. Grey monkey share banana with brown monkey. Both monkey. Silver monkey come along. Silver monkey. Silver monkey. Silver monkey have more banana. Brown monkey like silver monkey more than grey monkey. Silver monkey share banana with yellow monkey. Grey monkey sad. Grey monkey depressed. Grey monkey fall out of solution. And that's the heartbreaking story of Mercury. Anyways, I continue to add the aluminium until the color of the solution turns completely black, then move it to my other table for further processing. I start by shooting in about 100 milliliters of distilled water to liquefy all the sludge. Also just realized this looks awfully odd like OI <laughs> Sorry about that. After decanting the solution where most of the reactant resides, I come in with a wash bottle to remove any remnants of the previous solution, then proceed to decant this portion off as well. And zooming into our beaker here, we get our first sight at our crude mercury metal. This wash step was repeated about the same number of towers that were hit during the fateful day of 9-11. To further purify the crude mercury, I transfer it to a small beaker and then proceed to weigh out 0.9 grams of potassium permanganate before adding distilled water and creating a solution of LEAN! Here we have our mercury, and by adding the lean juice to it, we are attempting to oxidize all the impurities due to the potassium permanganate's strong oxidizing capabilities. Here you can see how dirty the mercury looks, but fret not, it's all just a part of the cleansing process. Now this is all cleaned up pretty easily by adding a 10% nitric acid solution to it, which dissolves all of the impurities leaving us with a relatively clean mercury product. By swirling it around, we expose more of the surface area in which more of the oxides may be destroyed. The oxidizing and nitric acid wash step is repeated about three times as well. Interesting swirl patterns are also visible, which I think just look really cool. However, even cooler when the mercury is cleaned from all the impurities. Now the final step to our purification process is to force the mercury through a syringe. Not just any syringe though, in this syringe we shove a cotton ball to act as both a towel and a filter. By pouring the mercury into our makeshift filter and pressing down on the plunger, all large impurities are left behind and all the water is sapped away by the cotton. The definition of two birds with one stone. And here is our final product, pure mercury. Here I have around 88 grams, which represents a 75% yield, which is not bad, considering theoretical is about 98 grams, or 85%. Before ending this video, I wanted to demonstrate a cool reaction between mercury and aluminium. So to an aluminium block I found, I drilled a small well using a drill. 
However, for the reaction to occur, the aluminium mustn't be oxidized. So by adding a drop of hydrochloric acid, I remove oxides off of the surface before wiping the acid away with a paper towel and adding a bead of our mercury. Observe what happens once the mercury is added. This is a time lapse over about 30 minutes and the small towers you see forming is actually aluminium oxide, which forms as the mercury amalgamates with the aluminium, basically taking revenge, and gets oxidized by the air. If you would like some of the mercury made within this video, I have provided a link to my eBay store where I'll be selling 70 grams of it. I appreciate you guys for all watching and wish you the greatest of days. Until next time.